So the Detroit Pistons just won the 2021 uh, NBA Draft Lottery. I took that over to 2K and subbed it in. Pistons only got the second pick, so I'm going to auto-trade for the first one. But basically, I'm going to be doing a realistic rebuild kind of thing where the Pistons get the number one overall pick, and they're going to take Cade Cunningham. Uh, it's basically going to be the same Pistons roster as last year with Cade and maybe a couple other rookies taken in the second round. But uh, this will be the first of the rebuild, so I'm going to manually trade over uh, the number one pick from the Cavaliers to the Pistons, and then we will start from there. All right, I basically kept everything the same, uh, just flip-flop the number one and number two picks. So in this draft, we're obviously going to be taking Cade Cunningham. That's what everyone thinks the consensus number one pick will be. That's who I want the Pistons to pick. So I'm going to go with Cade Cunningham, number one overall. So as you can see right here, I took Cade Cunningham, number one. I took A.J. Lapre, uh in the second round and Devin Williams. I think I'm only going to be taking uh, this AJ guy. Uh, also, this was mixed with like some YouTubers as well, which is really weird. I don't know why that that was what this draft class was, but they're all really bad overalls. So I think they'll eventually be out of the league, but I'm not going to sign them. The Pistons have two first round picks in real life um, or two second round picks in real life. So I'll be curious to see who they take there, but I'm just going to sign the two players that I think are actually real players. Uh, I'm not sure about this AJ guy, but I'm a thousand percent sure that Troy Troy Dan is a uh, 2K YouTuber, so I'm not going to take him there. Uh, moving to teams qualifying offers, we're not going to bring back Corey Joseph on his $12 million contract that the Pistons traded for this year. Also not going to bring back Rodney Magruder. Uh, it's a free $5 million off the books, even though I don't think the Pistons will really sign some, anybody in the offseason. Um, I'm not going to have them bring him back. And then Tyler Cook, he was actually pretty decent for the Pistons at the end of the year last year, played some decent minutes for him. So I'll bring him back to see what he can do. Um as far as qualifying offers, I plan on bringing back Saban Lee, who's only a one-year deal because of the G League thing. But in real life, he'll actually be on a contract. Uh, don't plan on giving one to Dennis Smith Jr. And as far as Hamadou Diallo, I'm not 100% sure what the Pistons are going to do with him moving forward. But I'm going to offer him one just because I think that he could be a decent player on this team. Uh, did take a point guard in this year's draft, so it is a little weird. Uh, I'm just going to go through the days of free agency. Obviously not going to bring back Dennis Smith Jr., uh, Wayne Ellington is a possible to bring back. I'm not sure if I'm going to do that, but I'm not bringing back Frank Jackson, not bringing back Dennis Smith Jr. Uh, and you know what? We have enough guards. Wayne Ellington's 33. He can go play for contender. I don't think he'd come back to Detroit anyway. So I'm going to renounce his cap as well. Uh, just get through the first three days free agency. Have free agency actually show up now. Um, yeah. So I'm going to sign, uh, Saban Lee as soon as I can find him. Um, he's asking for 11 million, which I feel like is a lot of money that the Pistons probably wouldn't want to pay him. Uh, they're going to have him in real life, but I'm going to give him a three-year deal for that. And then as far as Diallo, I don't think I'm going to bring him back for next season. Um, he was pretty decent. I could bring him back just to trade him. Uh, obviously not bringing back when Brent Forbes or not Brent Forbes, uh, Wayne Ellington, um, you know what? We're not going to bring back Diallo. We're just going to look to sign uh, Saban Lee, and then we're going to move forward. Saban Lee signs. I'm going to announce the right to Hamadou Diallo, and then we'll be back for player progressions, see how the players ended up doing. All right, as far as player progressions go, I doubt this is what it will look like in 2K because uh, I turned off injuries because uh, basically Killian didn't play most of his rookie year, but he went from a 72 to an 80 overall. I doubt that is what he'll rating will be in 2K22, but... Uh, yeah, so he went up to an 82, Sadiq and uh, Isaiah Stewart, their uh, ratings were already updated from the end of 2K21, so they only went up one, we start Kate at 79, Plumley gonna have to try to move that contract, but I think that'll take some finagling, considering that he is a pretty bad contract and not really desired, might have to hang on to him for one more year, then try to trade him next season. Um, Saban Lee goes up to a 72. Josh Jackson gets better. Sekou, I don't know what the long-term plans with the Pistons are, but he still has two more years, um, under his contract. So we're just going to keep him around to see if he gets better. Um, but as far as, uh, the rest of the guys, uh, we're going to play a really young rotation, see how we can do from there. Uh, I'm going to decide if I want to play Killian or, um, Kate at the one. As far as training camps, I forgot to fire my trainer, so we only have one training camp. So uh, we're going to use an untapped potential, which is kind of the best one in the game. Um, we're going to use it on probably our, I think, will be the best player, Sadiq Bey. He doesn't go up, but 
yep, doesn't go up. So we're going to move forward, sign enough people to fill out the roster, and we'll see what we can do in this 2021-2022 season. All right, as far as our rotation for next year, um, we're going to roll with the Killian at, Killian at the one just because he's a little bit shorter, so he'll be guarding the one most of the time. Uh, Cunningham at the two. One slash two, they'll be playing interchangeably. He'll get the most minutes on the team. After that, Sadiq will be playing 32. Grant and Stewart is probably going to be the starting lineup for next year. If the Pistons end up drafting Cunningham, I really like this young, really good starting lineup. Off the bench, Saban Lee, going to give him around 20 minutes, 21 minutes a game. Uh, the Plumley contract, I'm not going to move this year. Uh, I feel like it's pretty unrealistic, but once he is a unrestricted or a one-year uh, contract with an expiring, that's when we'll try to move him. And then as far as Josh Jackson, going to play him around 20 minutes. And then Sekou, only 14. Uh, he'll get better from those minutes. I doubt he really plays that much. But then after that, the rest of the guys aren't going to play very much. So, yeah, um, that second round pick that I took this year might play for the Pistons in real life, but he's not going to be playing for me this year. So I'll see you guys at the end of the year with what the record is and how everything goes. So we stopped here real quick to see uh, contract extensions just to see uh, what we can get for players. Sekou says he's expecting $22 million when he's a free agent in two years. So I don't know if Sekou is going to be back. Uh, we'll see how he progresses. So at the end of the first year of the Cade Cunningham rebuild, uh, we actually finished 41 and 41. Not that bad. A uh, big improvement from, I think, the Pistons only winning around 20% of their games in uh, last season compared to this season. Cade, obviously, uh, rookie of the year, scoring 19, 7 rebounds, 10 assists. That'd be amazing for a rookie year. Uh need to shoot a little bit better from three and from the field and actually from the free throw line. I'm a little surprised by that. I thought it'd be better. Um, but after that, not much Stan Van Gundy, who got fired in real life, one coach of the year. So that's a little bit funny. Uh, but everyone knows how good the Pelicans are in the sim. Besides that, um, I doubt anybody makes all any NBA teams. Uh, nobody on NBA second team Cade, obviously all rookie first team and yeah, nobody else, but we did make the playoffs as the eight seed against the number one Philadelphia 76ers. I doubt that goes well, but real quick, let's go look at the season's stats. Player stats will be the, okay. Oh, that's playoff stats, season stats. Duh. All right. So, uh, Cade averaged 19 points per game. After that, Jeremy Grant with a solid 16 a game. Uh, Killian with 16 and six. That's really good. The backcourt together averaged around 17 assists per game. That's really impressive. Isaiah Stewart, uh, averaged 15 a game, way more than I thought he would average. And Sadiq Bay only around 13. Saban Lee with 12 off the bench, Plumlee with 12 off the bench, Jackson with 12 off the bench, and Sekou with only five. Um, like I said, when I stopped, he wasn't willing to sign, resign long term uh, as a contract extension. Plus, uh, he was expecting 22 million. So after this year, this might be the last year you see Sekou, unless I see a drastic improvement from him. But that was this year's stats. Uh, Real quick, actually, though, before I get into the playoffs, uh, as far as roster, I wanted to see what uh, Sadiq Bay's shot tendency was because it does seem a bit low. Yeah, it's a bit low for what Sadiq actually shoots in a game. So I'm going to up it to around 70. I'm actually going to get it to 80, and then I'm going to decrease Stewart's to 70 because that seems more realistic. And then Cade, I'm going to up, and then Sekou, or um, for Killian, I'm going to dump down to 70 and then jeremy grant shoots way more than that so i'm gonna get him to a 70 and actually lower uh isaiah stewart's quite a bit because that seems pretty unrealistic that he would take that many shots especially more than uh sadiq bay so yeah let's go into the playoffs uh facing philly let's see anything different uh they signed tory craig to play their three um shake milton moved to the starting lineup Still have Maxi Tybel or Thibel, Terrence Mann. They got rid of a couple different players. Looks like they probably made a trade with the Clippers for Curry and maybe Danny Green, but they didn't address their Ben Simmons issue. We're going to play them in a quick series. I doubt we win this series, but let's see. Lost in a seven game series. Actually, way better than I expected. Uh, let's go and kind of see real quick the playoff stats, how the playoff players did. Yeah, see, after we evened it out a little bit and changed it around, uh, Cunningham averaged around 20 after I upped his shot tendency and Grant averaged 20. Sadiq averaging more what he did in his rookie season. Stewart scoring down went down a little bit, but the Killian Hayes numbers are not that great. Uh, he assists really well, but I guess you really need him to pass the ball more than Cade 
but uh, Cade still averaged more assists. So that was the end of the first season. Uh, I'll have my first round. I won't have my first round pick this year. It'll actually go to the Rockets because the Pistons are going to fall out of, I think, the lottery, which uh, was part of their trade uh, last year to get Isaiah Stewart when they traded up. But Hawks won the championship in the first actual year of the Cade Cunningham rebuild. So I'll meet you guys back with if I do any different signings or turn down any rules. No picks in this year's draft. Nothing really happened. Um, didn't sign a single player. As far as accepting player offers, we're going to accept every single player on this list except for AJ LaPrey because I'm pretty sure that might be a fake player. But uh, Sadiq Bey is upset with how things are going right now, which is kind of frustrating for some reason. Uh, I did up his shot tendency at the end of the year, but uh, maybe I might make him like the third scoring option and set scoring options and show you guys that this year. Um, Besides that, I don't know if we have any other free agents. Durant's a free agent, but I don't think any big names would be signing with Detroit quite yet. Um, take a look at my free agents here. Uh, Josh Jackson is a free agent. Uh, I have $27 million in cap space. I might try to make a move for a nice bench player, but uh, besides that, not really doing much. The goal will be to try to trade Plumlee this offseason with his expiring contract, maybe try to bring in a center. I'm definitely not going to bring Okafor back. No offense to Okafor, but... As you can see, I can afford almost any player in free agency, but uh, that's not the goal. I'm going to bring back a player who I think will actually contribute to this team moving forward. Uh, as far as these players, I'm going to renounce the rights on all of them, give myself as much cap space as possible. Uh, in real life, I don't think the Pistons would pick up any big name free agents, to be honest, but we are going to bring in a shooting guard, a shooting guard that I think can really help. Um, and I think... Looking at this list, uh, Pristons traded Bruce Brown. That'd be funny. Um, I think I'm going to actually go after Marcus Smart. He's 28. I'm going to offer him a contract. Three years, around $12 million a piece. Uh, maybe a little bit less than that, actually, because we're going to have to start signing some big-name guys. So, yeah, uh, we'll see if he takes my contract. He does. So we're going to sign Marcus Smart, a uh, veteran to this young Pistons team. That will really help off the bench feel like he's a big upgrade over josh jackson and then i'm gonna sign a uh center right now uh a backup center because we are planning on getting rid of uh planning on getting rid of miles Plumley. so i'm gonna do a two-year team op or a one in one contract where i basically decide if i want to bring back Derek favors next year and then i'm going to try to trade Plumley as soon as the season starts so those are going to be our two free agent signings i like those two pickups for the pistons uh, maybe not Marcus Smart on a three-year deal, maybe less than that. But yeah, as you can see, Killian Hayes goes to an 84. Jeremy Grant is kind of being a little, uh, he's kind of in the middle, so I don't know what I'm going to do with him. Um, I'd like to bring him back on a short-term deal maybe, uh, but besides that, he's not really progressing right now as a 28-year-old. Cunningham progresses. All of our young players, Sekou's actually progressing really nice. I could kind of bring him into a similar contract that I had Grant for, uh, but as you can see, Favors is already getting worse and Plumlee is getting even worse. I'm going to try to get off this Plumlee contract to see if I can get anything for him, but I kind of doubt it. So I'm coming back to you guys with the trade that I'm actually going to take, which is a trade I think that helps us right now. Uh, Jay Crowder only has one more year on his deal. They're the same overall, and I am giving up a second round pick, but I feel like Jay Crowder helps me more right now. Um, it's a 2027 second round pick. We're in the year 2022, 2023. So it's not going to be that big of a deal moving forward. We do get off this contract. We brought in that backup center. It's a little bit more money, but you know what? It's worth it at the end of the day to get rid of Plumlee, who's not even going to play for us this season. Um, going to my lineup, uh, it still wants Marcus Smart in as uh, the starter, but it's obviously going to be uh, Killian and uh, Cade. Same starting lineup. They actually have Seku coming in. I don't want that either. I want Jeremy Grant. Uh, yeah, but Seku is going to play a lot of minutes for us this year. Um, I'm going to move the rotation uh, from 9 to 10 guys. Uh, so we're going to have... So Crowder still not playing very many minutes. I'm going to down the minutes of favors. I'm going to give one more minute here. Up it a little bit uh, for Crowder decrease it a little bit uh they still want killian for some reason he's going to be playing the point guard i don't know why i know it's because they don't have their position set but i don't know why they change it every single time but yeah uh cunningham i'm going to cut down on the minutes a little bit actually uh sadiq up to 30 uh seku has a lot of minutes i don't know what's going on i still want jeremy grant as the starter this is the last year of his contract um but 
if halfway through the season that he's not playing well, then I might switch to Sadiq. Uh, Stewart, we're going to give to 30. We're going to cut down on Marcus minutes a little bit. Uh, up Killians, up Cade. A uh, couple more minutes to Jeremy Grant. And uh, one and one to Favors and Crowder. Uh, I'll see you guys at contract extension. See if I do anything there. Quick thing, system proficiency. Um, I'm going to keep at keep it at perimeter centric unless it's uh, better for the players to do no, just perimeter centric. So that is what it's going to be. So I will see you guys at the contract extension to see if I bring anybody back on a contract extension or not. So, end of the season, Luka's your MVP, Chet Holmgren, uh, Rookie of the Year, Precious Achua, Sixth Man, Defense Player of the Year, Giannis. Sekou actually wins most improved. Little peek towards who we're going to be signing in uh, free agency, probably going to be Sekou, not Jeremy Grant, probably going to let him walk. Um, Rick Carlisle win Coach of the Year. Uh, we look at the All-NBA teams. Um, none of our players make it. All defensive teams, none of our players make it. And obviously... None of our rookies are going to make it because we didn't have any this year. Um, we make the playoffs of a seven seed this year, a little bit better than last year. Uh, we'll actually have our uh, pick next season. But as far as everything else, let's go to the season's stats. Um, yep. Cunningham scores 20 a game again. Really just going off. Uh Sadiq with 17. Stewart with 13. Killian with 13. That's more like it for Killian. Uh, 13 for Lee, only 13 for Grant. This will be his last season in Detroit. You won't really see him next year. I think I'm going to sign uh, Sekou moving forward. Uh, Marcus Smart did okay. Not really what I wanted to pay him, considering his field goal percentage and his three were really, really bad. Uh, Crowder was subpar, and so was Favors. Uh, kind of older guys to mix with our veter or with our younger guys. Um, I don't think you'll see them next year. I think I'm going to look to bring in a lot of new guys. Uh, like mid-tier veterans, not like guys basically wrapping up the career like these guys are. Uh, but as far as the Hornets, you know what you're going to get. They actually have Zach Levine now, uh, Jay Sean Tate, Chet, oh my gosh, uh, Marvin Bagley, John Wall. So they got a lot of really nice players with LaMelo, Chet, PJ, uh, Marvin Bagley, uh, Zach Levine, Jay Sean Tate. It's kind of annoying to me that Chet and PJ aren't mixed back and forth with power forward and center, considering one is like seven foot two and the other is six foot ten. But whatever, stupid pet peeve. Uh, simulate the round. Yeah, we get two games. Uh, this Pistons team needs to take another step. We're kind of feeling like we're stuck after winning the lottery with uh, Cade. This was his second season, took a big advance there. But I will bring you guys to who I take in the draft. This player should actually help us win games. So excited for that. Some big news on the coaching staff standpoint. I feel like we've kind of been stuck with what we can do with Dwayne Casey. So first I'm going to offer, um, actually Dwayne Casey's numbers aren't that bad, but I'm actually going to fire Dwayne Casey. I see Nick Nurse here. I doubt that ever happens in real life that the Pistons snatch two straight coaches away from Toronto, but this is a 2K video. So I'm going to offer Nick Nurse and this uh, trainer. I'm going to sign the trainer, which will give us more training camps. I got rejected by Nick Nurse. Tough. Um, D'Antonio is still out there. Uh, this DJ Armstrong. Some I'm gonna go with this Trent Peterson, who I guess is a, I think I'm pretty sure a fake person who is a uh, coach, assistant coach for the Lakers. But I'm gonna offer him a head coaching job. He's gonna take it with me. Uh, we really improve our coaches there. And then now we're gonna go to the draft. I'll let you know who I pick with the 18th pick in this year's draft. Um, so I guess I really messed up picking this uh, draft class of 2023. Um, if you guys have any good PC draft classes, let me know. But this guy, Jackson Wellington, that I took, he was the 18th pick, and uh, he's a 57 overall. So I'm not going to sign him to a contract. I'm going to be using uh, auto-generated draft classes moving forward because obviously there aren't really great ones. But, uh, yeah, kind of disappointed because I thought this player could really help our team. But not going to get any of those guys. As far as uh, these guys, though, they will. I'm going to bring every single one of them back. Uh, Derek Favors, actually, I'm not going to bring him back next year, age 32. Didn't like his production last year. I gave him quite a decent amount of minutes and only scored two per game, so I'm not going to bring him back. Uh, all the big-name players accept their contracts. Fred Van Fleet does not. Qualifying offer, I'm going to be offering it to um, both these guys. I could see uh, Servitas getting some minutes next season, so 
We'll see if he comes back on the qualifying offer. But as far as Seku, I might try to sign him to a long-term contract because I'm a little done with Jeremy Grant. So really big deal here for Seku Dumboya. I'm going to bring him back on around a $20 million a year contract. Uh, it's a lot of money and I have a lot of free agents next year but I feel like he's worth it. Uh, he's a young player. I'm not gonna bring back Jeremy Grant. Um, I'm not gonna bring back uh, Tyler Cook, who I said might be okay, but yeah, or Jay Crowder. Um, we're gonna decline everybody else. We're gonna get rid of Jeremy Grant's cap hold, which is gonna bring out a lot of money for us. Tyler Cook, done there, and everybody else, I'm done. I guess I brought back Rodney Magruder at some point. Uh, filling out the roster. So yeah, that's the players that I'm going to take. Uh, Seku is actually going to take that $1 million qualifying offer instead, uh, which will allow him to, uh, which will allow him to be an unrestricted free agent next year. That's a little scary, but we're going to sign that contract. And now we have 57 million in cap space. Uh, it's a lot. I'm probably not going to do a whole lot with it to be honest, because we have a lot of free agents next off season, but definitely need some bench guys. So I'm going to show you guys who I sign at the end of free agency. Okay. So at player progressions, I'll also show you guys who I signed. Killian keeps on progressing. Cade's not progressing as fast. I thought he would, to be honest, uh, thought he'd go pretty quick. Uh, Sadiq actually went up one. Stewart went up one. Seku went up two. I signed Nerlens Noel to play our backup center. I really like that signing there. Marcus Smart still on the team. Uh, he's getting a little bit worse, but he only has two years left on his deal. Uh, after that, Saban Lee, he's kind of been in the middle ground. Eh. Uh, signed Shake Milton to be another wing off the bench, and I also signed Josh Hart to a really favorable contract. So I gave Josh Hart two years compared to everybody else. I only gave one year with a team option, and then uh, Servius brought him back on the qualifying offer. So was able to escape by with not a whole lot of money spent. I also finally signed a... Uh, trainer that will give us three training camps so yeah i wish i would have done this from the beginning and then maybe we wouldn't have been so like stuck in place with some of our rookies but as far as everyone else i will do untapped potentials to killian cade and um sadiq bay so meet you guys see you guys with who i decide in the starting lineup and everything so our rotation coming into the year three of Cade Cunningham rebuild, Killian Hayes, Cade, uh, Seik, or Sadiq Bey, Seku now after we let um, Jeremy Grant walk, uh, Isaiah Stewart, New Orleans Noel, Shake Milton, Marcus Smart, Saban Lee, and Josh Hart. I really like this, a lot of wing depth coming off the bench, which I prefer over one guy. So I'm going to take a solid big man coming off the bench and then some nice wings. Besides that, Decent starting lineup. Everybody in the 80s, I would have liked to see everybody progress a little bit more, but I kind of messed up on my part with not signing a better trainer earlier. So, um, yeah, this might be the second to last year of this rebuild, depending on how much longer this takes. But, um, yeah, this is kind of like a look into the Pistons' future almost. So, uh, yeah, I will let you guys know what I end up doing at the contract extension slash uh, trade deadline. But looks like the Pistons are pretty bad at this 6-19 record right now. So, see you guys then. Okay, uh, I know this is stupid, but we have the cap space to do it, so I'm going to go out and do it. I'm actually going to trade Marcus Smart and Servias over to the Cavaliers for Jarrett Allen. I doubt this trade ever happens in real life, but it's getting to the point where we're 19-34 and 34 this season, and I do not like the way it's looking. So, I'm going to trade Jarrett Allen, f trade for uh, Jarrett Allen. So, uh, yeah. Um... I'm say, okay, make the trade. It's done. Jarrett Allen's in the starting lineup. Uh, besides that, I made Kate Cunningham a shooting guard uh, just so I wouldn't get so much like glitchy stuff going on with him like going back and forth. And then I'm actually going to change Isaiah Stewart to a power forward. That's probably closer to what his position is going to be uh, or what his position actually is with his height. So with that being said and having now a backup big off the bench, I might actually also try to trade uh, maybe New Orleans Noel as well. Let's go look at to see what the... Um, coaching game plan looks like first uh yeah so that's what i thought the lineup was gonna look like um we're gonna stick with these main three guys they're really good and then actually i'm gonna go big and i'm going to put isaiah stewart in the starting lineup bring seku off the bench bring new Orleans noel saban lee shake milton and josh hart uh this is a much more well-rounded lineup uh i'm gonna take a few minutes off these guys and pump up um sadiq but Besides that, I like where this lineup's at. This is probably the best lineup we've had so far. I think Jared Allen's a great player. We're going to have to start signing a lot of guys to big contracts. So, 
the money does hurt us a little bit, but we're going to have to make some decisions uh, coming into the next two years. So after a mediocre start to the season, since we traded for Jarrah Allen, we ended up going fit. Uh, we ended up going 41 and 41. Amoni Bates averaging 30 is uh, your rookie of the year. Um, Nico Mannion, six man, that's a joke. Uh, Brad Stevens, coach of the year, also not a coach anymore. Uh, all NBA teams. Cade, hey, 88 overall, finally makes any all NBA team. Uh, surprising, I thought he would have made it by now. And then we don't get any defensive or any. Um, yeah, Omoni's in 92 after one year. And they said he went to the University of Michigan. So whoever made this draft class is an absolute asshole. Um, moving forward, we're going against the Celtics. They have TJ McConnell now. Romeo Langford still kind of not really progressing well. They they picked up Christian Wood, Miles Bridges, uh, Jared Culver. They still have Nesmith, uh, Shreve O'Neal, Peyton Pritchard off the bench. So this is a pretty solid team. I feel pretty confident in our ability to beat them, though. Our player stats is... Sadiq finally has a huge year. Uh, Cunningham's been averaging around 20 consistently, which is odd. Killian averaging 17, really great. Uh, Seku 12. Isaiah Stewart and Jarrett Allen just doing, doing what they need to do, rebounding the ball, uh, scoring where they need to. And, yeah, they did a really good job doing that. And then Jarrett Allen, 1.6 blocks per game, probably could have seen him an all-defensive team. Also, Cade with 1.5 blocks per game is absolutely insane. But, yeah, as far as uh, the 2K sim, I think they really value tall players. As you can see, we beat the Celtics in a seven-game series. That's absolutely insane. Now taking on the Bulls, who I believe are the team that have... Uh... Nope, they don't. Sweet, we might win this series. Uh, yeah, this pre this team's pretty lackluster, to be honest. Uh, we might actually beat them as the eighth seed and move on to the second round. And we do. Hmm. But this <laughs> the Sim really values height. So, yeah. So having two guys who are basically centers helps uh holy shit uh as an eight seed we've now made the nba finals against steph clay wiggins uh pascal wiseman nico Mannion, who's an 86 that will never happen uh uzman garuba they picked up him there uh nathan knight uh but yeah uh if we win this nba championship it's insane what the what the what the hell just happened all right, well, that's the end of your video there. Uh, what? Cade, 27 points per game in the playoffs. Holy crap. Uh, let's just look at the playoff settings real or the playoff numbers. Oh, my God. This is absolutely insane. Yeah, so really good rebuild, to be honest. I thought that Cade would progress better. I thought Sadiq would progress better. But, yeah. Matt left for five minutes and missed it, and we won the NBA championship. So Matt was probably the bad luck as no the eight way. as the eighth seed went all That's the way through. Me. Sorry, Detroit yeah, fans. Yeah, three seven game series and one sweep in the Eastern Conference Finals. That's absolutely insane. Um, as the eighth seed. As the eighth seed. <laughs> what the hell? So if we learned anything from this video, is that the two K sim loves height. Uh, the Pistons should take K Cunningham number one overall, and Jeremy Grant probably won't progress any better than he is now. But Hey, I guess 2K thinks that um, all the other players are going to be really good, so we'll take it. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, peace. Hope the Pistons take Cade number one overall. Don't mess it up.